In a previous guide, we showed you how to intercept security camera images over Wi-Fi, but it required knowing the password. Instead, if you have physical access, we'll show you how to use the Hack5 plunder bug to do the same thing on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In a previous guide, we showed you how to intercept Wi-Fi security camera footage using Wireshark. Now this technique is powerful, but it did come with a couple limitations, the most serious of which being you have to know the network password in order to have a chance at doing this. In addition, you also need to make sure that the camera is actually transmitting over Wi-Fi, because if it's an Ethernet camera, then that technique simply won't work. Today, we're going to go over an alternative way of doing this, where instead of the password, you just need physical access to the Ethernet cable that's running to the computer watching the security image. To do this, we'll be using a Hack5 plunder bug, which operates as a USB Type-C device that has two different Ethernet ports and allow us to see any traffic that's flowing in between. Now, if we had physical access to a network, aka we were able to get into where the cable is attaching to the computer or even along the other end to where the uh, router is connecting to the Ethernet cable that goes to the computer, we could simply plug this in, plug it into our computer, and then be able to see anything, say the security camera footage, that's passing between those two points. Now, to use this, we'll just take the cable that's going to the router, plug it in, the cable that's going to the device that's looking at the security camera footage and plug it in here. And then this should power up and allow us to not only access the network if we want to, but in this case, intercept traffic and actually extract images from the security camera. Now, if you need additional setup instructions, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description or look for more documentation on Hack5. However, in general, this is a really easy tool to use and all you need is a computer which can run Wireshark. Once you have that, then we can get started. Now, let's say that we are in proximity to a computer that is getting all the information we want, but we don't actually have access to that computer. Maybe it's in another room, or maybe the IP camera that is actually taking in the footage is just going along some route that otherwise we wouldn't be able to access. It's not on Wi-Fi, so even if we knew the password, we would not be able to see it. Well, first step would be to, as we already did, plug in the plunder bug and then connect it to our computer, after which it should show up as a USB Ethernet interface. So first, let's take a look at the plunder bug and see exactly what it's designed to do. Now here you can see it's a $50 device that's advertised as being able to use cross-platform scripts to enable network sniffing, uh, both passive and active scanning. So if you scroll down, we can see this is kind of how it's supposed to be set up. Um, the one cable goes in, the other cable goes out. It can get its own IP address on the network so it can scan things. And then if you have a rooted Android phone, you can actually just plug it directly into your Android phone and do all these things on the go. So I don't have a rooted Android phone handy, but I wanna show how easy it is to do something that we did before that was a little bit more difficult. And you can see some more uh, specifications here, auto negotiating 10, 100, base T fast ethernet, uh, and some more information. But let's for now focus on the applicability of this to a previous scenario we had where we wanna intercept some security camera footage that is going to another computer on our network. So we've successfully tapped this network. So if we want to see whether or not this is showing up, in our Kali Linux system, we can type ifconfig, and then I'm just going to do the pipe symbol and grep eth. So we only see ethernet interfaces. And here we go, we have ETH0, which is our uh, computer's internal ethernet, and then ETH1, which is our plunder bug. So this is connected to uh, the ethernet here. And if we want to go ahead and open up Wireshark, I can just hit Wireshark. And I'm running this as root, so I should get a little bit of a warning here about that, but I'm going to ignore it for now. And instead in Wireshark, we are going to select, uh, here we go. We're gonna select not the ethernet, uh, sorry, not the Wi-Fi, but the ethernet one. So you can see ETH zero is getting nothing because we're not actually connected on the computer's ethernet. Instead, we are connected on the USB ethernet adapter. So we can go ahead and click here in order to start sniffing the connection between two different computers. Well, in this case, the computer that we're targeting and then the router. 
So here we have all sorts of traffic, and some of this may be encrypted, but to make sure that we're checking out for traffic that isn't encrypted, we can just type in the Wireshark filter window, HTTP. Now, as soon as we do this, we can see there's still a lot of traffic coming in, actually HTTP, and these are get uh, and then HTTP, re HTTP request. We can see that this is actually a JPEG image. So if you're seeing this, then that means somebody is accessing a insecure web portal, which is kind of the standard on a lot of different webcam viewers, uh, and taking a look at images that are being refreshed every couple of seconds, or every second it looks like. So since we're intercepting all these, we should be able to actually just extract these and see what the person is seeing on the security camera. So let's go ahead and stop our capture, which is coming from the plunderbug, and then click on file. Oops, did it stop? Nope. There we go. Click on file. Then we're going to export objects. And then the objects that we're exporting are HTTP. Now here we can see we intercepted a lot of different images. And I'm going to select, I mean, we can definitely save all of them if we want to, but let's just select one as an example so we can start to see what's going on behind all these images. So we'll click on save. And then I'm gonna select the desktop and name the file blunderbugcapture.jpg and hit save. Okay, now, in order to make sure this worked, let's go ahead and go to a file window. We'll go to our desktop, and then we'll search for plunder plunderbugcapture.jpg, and when we open it, we should be able to see an intercepted image from the security camera. And again, this should work regardless of whether the camera is going over ethernet or going over Wi-Fi. Oops. There we go. So we just captured this image from the security camera, meaning we have a pretty good picture of what's going on and we can even do this continually and maybe add them all together to create a frame by frame reconstruction of what the security uh, camera is seeing. Now, if we wanted to, and we stitch these all together, we could simply tap in here and maybe even start to manipulate traffic by blocking images that are coming from the security cam image and just maybe replaying previous ones. If we did this, we would be able to do pretty much whatever we want, and the person on the other end of the camera would never be able to tell that they were just seeing replayed images. So there's a lot of different things you can do besides just maybe intercepting them, including maybe preventing them from being transmitted at all, or actually transmitting fake ones instead of the ones that the person was expecting to see. While the plunderbug has a number of advantages, it works differently than infiltrating a Wi-Fi network, so it has some disadvantages as well. Unlike Wi-Fi, which transmits all the data passing over the network on the same channel, Ethernet only transmits data on the cable that's connected directly to the computer that you're looking to monitor. Because of this, if you connect the plunderbug to the wrong Ethernet cable, you're likely to end up monitoring the wrong computer and not see the right information at all. If you need any more information, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any other questions, you can also look at the Hack5 website for more documentation. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.